What you don't want to do is condition your chat into thinking something is safe and then when they do it again you snap at them because like that's jarring for anyone to experience. What's up everyone, Nihongo Gamer here. This is a little discussion we had about some of the unique situations that arise from doing a live show while playing games and trying to improve and how that can sometimes lead to unique situations. On this occasion, I was receiving various advice regarding Street Fighter V and although it wasn't a meltdown, I did feel a bit overwhelmed and it really got me thinking about how this is probably really common and will probably happen more and more as streaming continues to increase in popularity. So don't forget to subscribe, tell me what you think in the comments and enjoy the video. Video. Don't worry about advice. I'm, I'm in sort of tired mode at the moment. Too much advice will just kind of, it's kind of over flooding my brain with just like a million different things to do. I'm in a sort of, I don't really want to improve mood right now. This is another thing that happens in, in fighting game chat. When people tell you what you're supposed to do, you feel like there's pressure that you're supposed to do it. So it's like, do the air hadoken, do the air hadoken. And like, now I like don't want to do the air hadoken. I just want to like prove that I can play the match without the air hadoken. The reason, the reason I kind of got a little, what's the word? Reverse psychology there. It's like, everyone's like, dude, you need to zone him out. You need to hang back. You need to use the air hadoken. It's like, it's all, it's all good advice, but I just get kind of like mentally worn out. I'm not very strong at the game and people who are stronger than I am at the game want me to improve, right? And so, even though I've like turned on the stream to like just play the game, chill out and have some fun, it suddenly turns into this coaching session where everyone who's good at Street Fighter on Earth wants to like give advice and tell me what I should have done there instead. It just turns into this sort of ongoing coaching session to become some pro in Street Fighter, which I do appreciate. And most of the time I do want to improve, but the rest of the time I just want to talk, like chit chat about random stuff while playing the game and hopefully improve while I'm doing stuff at the same time. You know what I mean? Like the main thing about making videos and streaming is that people feel kind of free. Like, ah oh, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out and play video games, turn the camera on, hang out and play the game with some people. But I think it's the equivalent of if you and your buddies got some beers and you turned on Street Fighter Alpha 1 and you're like, hey, let's have some fun with Street Fighter Alpha 1. And then there's like, three or four people that show up from the fighting game scene and they want to teach you all about how to alpha counter and how to do the target combos and all this specific specific stuff that you could do in alpha one and you're all sitting there like i appreciate the help and of course of course i want to improve at the game but I've do i don't always want to improve at the game like 100 of the time i just wanted to like explain why i ended up so resistive there because it does feel a bit like when you're when you're not a pro at a fighting game, people people think they people think that you're ready to like be in improvement mode every minute of the stream. And then it just turns into this like grind where every stream you're just showing up to get better at your anti-airs and learn the mix-ups and learn the frame data and like I want to, but at the same time I want to do it when I feel like it. It's difficult though. In summary, I appreciate all the help. <laughs> I, I do genuinely really appreciate the help. I just want to explain, just in case it looked like I was starting to get upset. It's not about being upset. It's like, let's say you went on YouTube and you made a video called 10 ways to travel around the world on a budget, right? And you're like talking about all these 10 things, all the ways that you found to save money and fly to, I don't know, Guatemala or Ireland or at, Antarctica or something. And then all the comments are just, yo man, you need to replace your microphone. Yo man, you should get yourself a mirrorless camera. Yo man, you should sh you should shoot at 24 frames per second. It's more cinematic. Yo man, you should put a LUT on your, on your camera because your colors are out of whack. And you're like, well, of course, I want to get better with my camera. I want to learn how to edit properly. And yeah, I want to get a new mic eventually, but that's not why I made the video. I made the video to talk about traveling to Antarctica. And that's the thing with fighting games is you never really know when a person is in like full on coach me mode. Yeah, and then there's like multiple people suggesting different things at the same time. And I start to feel bad if I don't implement them. So it's like air, air hadoken, 
That's a genius idea. Okay. Zone him out a bit more. That's another genius idea. Brilliant. Hang back a bit. All these, all this stuff, I was like, this is all, this is all great stuff. But now I feel like obliged to keep an eye on the chat. See if this happens to other streamers that you watch. In order to progress with the stream and not just turn into a hardcore fighting game session, which can actually be kind of boring and turn a stream with a hundred people into a stream with 10 people. And only those, those 10 people are only the only people who are like deathly serious about frame data and mix-ups and match-ups and meta and all that. And I'm like trying to, trying to balance it and like enjoy myself chit chat about stuff at the same time of course improve at the game i mean i'm taking notes I, I clearly want to get better but after a while it's like if i don't if i don't take into account like the 50 things that are being suggested in the chat if i don't do them people are gonna think i'm really stubborn it's gonna seem like i'm stubborn and even if people aren't thinking that it, that's how it feels on the on the streamer side you're like oh man i must look like a really stubborn person because i just refuse to take on this advice it's not it's not actually that i refuse to take it on it's just that there's so much of it, and this is why people usually, in a sport, they usually have one designated person as the coach. They don't take all the advice of every person shouting from the bleachers, because obviously it would be a mess. But like in a stream, everyone's voice is the same volume. That's just the way with the internet. And one of the, the benefits of the internet, really, is that everyone's voice is a level playing field. If they think that they that way when you've already told them, then that's their problem, not yours. Oh yeah, and also I'm not saying this because I feel like, I feel like actually everyone watching right now, I feel like you all understand me quite well. I just felt like, on, it was, that was like, that's like a rare occasion where I started to actually start feeling in my, like, this doesn't usually happen to me on stream. But I was like, why, why does everyone keep telling me what to do? I stream because I, I do whatever I want to do. And it, it's like, you're at odds with yourself. You're like, wait, I'm here to do what I want, but at the same time, I'm here to take advice and do what everybody says. Which one is it? Am I just being stubborn and I don't want to be stubborn. I want to get better at the game, but at the same time, I want to like play the game and do it my way. You'd be like being tossed back and forth and I don't know. I feel like you all understand me. Rare footage of the Hungry Gamer actually angry. I'll tell you what, this is rare footage of the Hungry Gamer genuinely dehydrated. I'm not playing any more Street Fighter tonight. I do love the game, but I recognize that my favorite way to play this game is to be fueled up with the energy to play consciously. And I know that when I get tired, like I don't want to stop because I'm like, I want to play one more, I want to play one more, but I'm like tired. I'm not paying attention. I'm not even really looking for anything. I'm not thinking anything. Like usually when I'm switched on and ready to go, out, whoa. It's dangerous to go alone, take this. I'm not gonna play any more Street Fighter today because I don't enjoy playing the game when I'm not ready to, to play it in a focused way. I think if I want to just chill and not play properly and just go to autopilot, which I think is a legitimate way to enjoy the game as well. You don't have to be in tournament mode trying to rank up all the time. I would prefer to do that like some other time. But like right now, it's like, I want to improve, but I don't have the energy to do it. So why am I pushing myself to play? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. But I, I, I love the game so much when I do have the energy. When I like, haven't, when I've been working all day and I go, yes, finally, it's the evening. I'm gonna turn the game on and I'm not on stream. And I can just get my notebook out, play some matches, watch some replays and not worry about whether it's interesting to watch or anything. That's, that's like really satisfying to do. The challenge now is can I take those sessions on stream as well? And uh, that's, that's, it's not easy. I'll tell you what it is. It's just streaming. People are afraid, including myself. I'm afraid to not be playing the game. I'm afraid to just like sit here and, and just chat, even though actually that's a heck of a lot of fun. That's a lot of the, the most, the main bulk of the fun of, of doing a stream. But because live streaming really grew up on the back of video games, I, f I feel like insecure about about being on screen without some sort of electronic entertainment. Have you watched any Brian F on YouTube? Yeah, I've seen a few of his videos, yeah. He's having this issue too, I think. He cracked a little the other day. Interesting. I wouldn't know, oh yeah, I don't know if I would say like I've cracked, but definitely I'm having one of those moments where it's like, it's, it's just the backseat gaming thing. I think it's written in my profile. Advice is welcome. So it's actually written in my profile. Please give me all the advice. And it's because 
98% of the time, I really enjoy getting this advice. Pretty much everything I know about fighting games has come from the past two years of streaming on Twitch and YouTube and talking to you beans in the chat. And also going to events and talking to people about fighting games at events, right? So without all this feedback, I'd be nowhere. I'd, I'd have learned nothing. But it's that 2% of the time when you're like, you're just playing, you're like, okay, I don't really know much about Abigail. I suppose I wish I had kind of studied a bit more, but all I know is that he does that, that run, which can turn into a flip or a punch. And I know I'm supposed to neutral jump, but I don't know when exactly. And here it comes. Oh, now I'm getting hit. And uh, he's not even pressing any buttons, but I'm getting myself killed. And, and at that point you're like, I don't have the energy for this. And then you look at the chat and everyone's like, oh, you should have done this. You should have pressed that button. You should have done this instead. Or you're pressing too many buttons now. Or maybe you should, whatever. It's just, it's just you should this, you should this, you should this. And it's all well-intentioned. And, and what's difficult is that most of the time I'm asking for advice like that. You can't really predict when the streamer is going to change moods. And we don't have like a, a light above our heads that says, yo guys, now is not the time. And you also don't really want to say it either because because it just sounds mean. <laughs> like I am actually very welcome. I, I'm, I'm very open to advice almost all the time. It's just like when I have that moment where I'm like, guys, not now. It sounds kind of aggravated, but I don't, I don't want to be aggravated. If, if I'm going to be aggravated, I'd rather not be on stream, right? Instead of shocking everyone and going, yo, everyone shut up, I can't handle it. I think maybe it would be smart to build it into the stream as like a mode. Like I said, we don't have a light on top of our heads that says it. I might just, I might just make it like a label as a, a little icon in the corner of the screen, like here. They could say, no backseat gaming today. At least then people know like, I'm not in the please give me advice mood. Because like, again, like I say, 98% of the time, I want this advice. What you don't want to do is condition your chat into thinking something is safe and then when they do it again, you snap at them because like that's jarring for anyone to experience. It's a thing that we've learned about YouTubing and, and Twitch and streaming is that with YouTube, obviously, we're only on the videos for like what, five to 10 minutes for however long the video is, but those videos are accessible 24 hours a day. And so people have questions for you 24 hours a day and they show up on your Twitter and they want to DM you and they want to add you as a friend and they want to play you in matches and it all becomes a little bit too much. You're like, whoa, it's one thing to be, I don't know, a performer at your local drama performance, like a playhouse in, in your local town and people know you there and they bump into you in, in town. But once it's YouTube, like everyone lives in different time zones. They're all sending you messages at different times. And as you guys all know, basically I don't add anyone as friends on PSN anymore. I don't really, I, I basically have DMs switched off on Twitter now. Um, if, if anything comes in that's not a business message, I just don't even read it. It's not just Twitter, but it's like the comments as well and the chat as well. And I think what we've what we've seen is that the the technology is ahead of the culture and the culture of like whether YouTubers can handle all of the attention has been kind of dramatic, you know, it's like, whoa, actually, you know what? It's all a little bit, it's all a bit too much. And then streaming is, is kind of like five years behind YouTube. It's, it's happening, but all slightly later and kind of magnified because the streamer has to handle it live as opposed to making a video the following week and saying, Hey guys, sorry, I didn't upload for a week because Last week, I just the, the comments were a little bit too much for me to handle, but I'm back now and here's the video. On Twitch, it's like, guys, don't backseat game today. I just can't handle it. But then at the same time, the streamer can't explain why suddenly they don't want backseat gaming. Let me just state here though, that I'm usually fine with it and I'm usually very open to it. Actually, yeah, so actually by this point, I've, I've, I've managed to calm down a bit. And so now it's just more of an open discussion about the fact that moods and the sort of mental state of uh, a YouTube video maker or a Twitch streamer is something that isn't fully understood yet. And until it is fully understood, and it, it may never be fully understood, 
we're gonna keep running into these situations where someone like myself, I'm having this situation where it's also like, oh, everything I told everyone to say to me, now I just like can't handle it. And then I don't know, like what you were mentioning earlier in the chat about certain professional players also going through something like that, but it's probably even more amplified because they're giving advice, but they're also receiving advice and they don't want to look like a scrub because it's also their career to play at a high level. This has been a really eye-opening stream because it's the communication aspect. I think until streaming as a platform has matured, stuff like this is going to happen a lot, where the streamer suddenly can't handle the input, but they can't voice exactly what the problem is. So I think in the future, probably streams will, it'll be like the culture to have a little button in the top of the, or like a little icon that says no backseat gaming now or something. I mean, for a stream like mine where usually most of the time I'm I'm fine with it. I think having little stuff like that built into the system would make it easier because I don't want to say it out loud because if I say it when I feel it, it'll come out as like aggressive. And I don't want to sound aggressive because in general, I don't feel like I want to be an aggressive person. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed so that you get notifications of new videos. And if you want to hang out on the Discord, come and chill out on the Discord and follow me on Twitter. I will see you all in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream. Bye.